Today's readings Rejoice and surrender My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior Luke 1 verse 47 You are a joke You are not good enough to lead You are a failure You are not what we are looking for You are not qualified We hear these words about ourselves They come from another person A situation we find ourselves in or how we talk to ourselves. And what follows is a spiral down to a vicious state of negativity. Mary found herself in a seemingly dire and dark situation through no fault of hers. It was an unexpected pregnancy that could have led to a scandalous divorce and shame for her family. Still, Mary chose to rejoice and surrender herself to God's will, which would ultimately lead to the salvation of us all. As we look at Mary's example, may we always rejoice in God's call despite the seeming trouble they entail. Reflect. The difference between peak performance and poor performance is not intelligence or ability, most often it's the state that your mind and body is in. Tony Robbins. Lord, may I always rejoice in you, my Savior, in any and every circumstance I may find myself in. Saint Mactildis pray for us. First reading Zephaniah 3 verses 14 to 18, or Romans 12 verses 9 to 16. As we celebrate the visitation of the Virgin Mary today, we remember her as a woman who lived a blessed life. Like Mary, we have the choice to place our lives under the grace of God or refuse to do so. The lure of the world and its pleasures is great, but is not the promise of eternal life greater. Let us follow the example of Mary. Shout for joy, O daughter Zion. Sing joyfully, O Israel. Be glad and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has removed the judgment against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You have no further misfortune to fear. On that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion, be not discouraged. The Lord, your God, is in your midst, a mighty Savior, He will rejoice over you with gladness, and renew you in His love, He will sing joyfully because of you, as one sings at festivals. Responsorial Psalm Isaiah 12 verses 2 to 3, 4, 5 to 6. Response, among you is the great and holy one of Israel. God indeed is my Savior, I am confident and unafraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord and He has been my Savior. With joy, you will draw water at the fountain of salvation. Response, among you is the great and holy one of Israel. Give thanks to the Lord, acclaim His name, among the nations, make known His deeds, proclaim how exalted is His name. Response, among you is the great and holy one of Israel. Sing praise to the Lord for His glorious achievement, let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exultation, O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Response, among you is the great and Holy One of Israel. Gospel Luke 1 verses 39 to 56. Mary must have struggled to remain faithful to God in her life. Her response to God's call is an example to us, but not one to mythologize that it becomes the stuff of a superhuman. Mary is one of us. She is a simple human being graced with a life without sin. If God can do what He did for Mary, He has the power to deal with our struggles in life as well. Gospel Acclamation Blessed are you, O Virgin Mary, who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Most blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? 
For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believe that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed, the Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm, he has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. Reflect. What challenges do you face in remaining faithful to God? What help do you need that little spark of joy within? Mary is confused. Mary is disturbed. Mary is troubled. She does not know what to do nor how to explain to Joseph what is happening to her. The punishment for such deception and betrayal is death by stoning. This is the situation, the context of this classic passage in the Gospel we call the Visitation. What was the condition of her travel from Nazareth to Ain Kerum where Elizabeth was? That was around 150 kilometers, like the distance from Pasay to Lucina City in Quezon province. There were not many transportation options then. Usually either you take it by foot or by a donkey in a caravan. Ain Kerum is on the outskirts of Jerusalem and is about 750 meters above sea level while Nazareth is at 350 meters. This means Mary had to trek uphill nearly 350 meters in elevation. The difficult path through the mountainous region is believed to have been a popular place for bandits, who would surprise unsuspecting travelers. We have to remember that Mary was already pregnant by this time. Despite her situation, Mary went out to visit her cousin Elizabeth. We can imagine that Mary visits Elizabeth for practical reasons. She is thinking of her cousin's well-being. She wants to encourage Elizabeth and share the little spark of joy she possesses. Imagine two different women, young and old, who both miraculously received God's blessing to give birth to a son who would alter the destiny of their nation. Picture the two women now finding a confidant in each other, someone who could personally understand their excitement, their wonder and their joys. Mary reminds us that, in life, we will have trials and difficulties. We will never run out of problems. She is going through something, yet she also carries that spark of joy brought about by the child Jesus in her womb. Reflect. When your life is dark, what brings you joy? Who is the source of your joy? When there's little or no spark of joy within me, Lord, send me your Holy Spirit to inspire me. Amen. Today, I pray for. Thank you for watching. God bless.